We're in Chapter 6 now about polygons and quadrilaterals. This is identifying and classifying polygons. So we've learned the definition of a polygon before as a closed plane figure, so it can't be open like this, and it's formed by three or more segments. Each segment intersects exactly two other segments, and they only intersect at their endpoints, and no two segments are collinear. So now we'll learn about the parts of a polygon and about ways we can classify polygons. Each segment that forms a polygon is a side of a polygon. And the common endpoint of two sides is a vertex of a polygon. And a segment that connects any two non-consecutive vertices is a diagonal. So non-consecutive means not in order. So we're going from B to C to D. These are sides. If we cut across and go from B to D and skip C, well, then that's a diagonal. And we can name a polygon by the number of its sides. And polygon A, B, C, D, E is a pentagon. It has five sides. If we ignored this diagonal, it would be like the sideways shape of a house. See that? If I turn my camera. So that's a pentagon. And number of sides helps us with the name of the polygon. So 3 is a triangle, of course, 4 is a quadrilateral, 5 is a pentagon, 6 is a hexagon, 7 is a heptagon, 8 is an octagon, 9 would be a nonagon, 10 is a decagon, 12 is a dodecagon, and if it has an, a large amount of sides or sides we don't know, it just has many sides, we can call it an n-gon and just use a variable there for however many sides it's got. And we can tell whether each figure is a polygon, and if it is, we can name it by the number of its sides. Here we have a pentagon. It is a polygon. It is a closed plane figure, and it is formed by three or more segments. And each segment intersects exactly two other segments, and they only intersect at their endpoints, and no two points are collinear. This is not a polygon. It intersects more than two other segments, and look, this segment is collinear with this segment. That's not allowed. This is a polygon. It's got eight sides, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is an octagon. It may not look like a normal octagon, what you're used to seeing, but any polygon with eight sides is considered an octagon. And I'll all the sides are congruent in an equilateral polygon. So every side is the same side length, and all the angles are congruent in an equiangular polygon, like an equilateral triangle. A regular polygon is one that is both equilateral and equiangular. And if a polygon is not regular, it's called irregular. A polygon is concave if any part of the diagonal contains points in the exterior of the polygon. See how this is kind of punched inward? We can think of concave as it's caving in. See? If no diagonal contains points in the exterior, here we have two diagonals on the interior, then the polygon is convex. So the diagonal points are in the interior, it's convex. If it's in the exterior, it's concave. This one is caving in. All of the vertices on this one are pointing outward. See? Now look at this one. It's caving in. So it's concave. And we could do a diagonal across here, couldn't we? And even though it's symmetrical, it's irregular because there's three different side lengths and different angle measures. Look at this one. This one is a regular concave. Every side length is congruent and every angle measure is congruent. See? And all the diagonals would be inside. All the vertices are punching outward, aren't they? This one, we have these two are congruent. That's one measure. These two are congruent. That's another measure. And then these two are congruent. That's another measure. That's three different side lengths. And we know 
that we could put a diagonal across there, okay? So that's irregular. And we can tell whether each polygon is regular or irregular or if they are concave or convex. So here we have a rectangle. Well, the diagonals would be on the inside. It's got different side lengths, so it's irregular and it's convex. This one is a regular polygon. It's equilateral and equiangular and it's convex. This one, this is concave here, this is concave, this is concave, this is concave. We could put a diagonal across here, across here, across here, and across here, couldn't we? So it's irregular and concave. To find the sum of the interior measures of a convex polygon, we draw all possible diagonals from one vertex of the polygon. This creates a set of triangles. And the sum of the angle measures of all the triangles equals the sum of the angle measures in of the polygon. So here's a square, and it is a quadrilateral, but I wanted to start you off easy. So we have a square. We go from a vertex and make a diagonal. We make two triangles, and we know, because of the triangle sum theorem, the sum of the interior angle measures of a triangle is 180 degrees. If we have two triangles, we do 2 times 180. We get 360 degrees for the interior of a square. And we can also look at it as we have four 90-degree angles, don't we? And 4 times 90 is 360. So here's a quadrilateral. It's got four sides. Remember, anything with four sides is considered a quadrilateral. We can go to this vertex here and make, I mean, one diagonal. And that creates two triangles. So that's 2 times 180, which is 360. For the pentagon, remember, we can only be at one vertex to make our triangles to make our diagonals. So I make one coming down here and one coming down here. And see how I draw the diagonal from the vertex we've chosen to another vertex. See that? It made three triangles. Three times 180 is 540. So the interior angle measures of a pentagon is 540. We do it to a hexagon. We choose one vertex and we draw a diagonal to another vertex, to another vertex, and another vertex. We make four triangles. Four times 180 is 720. So anytime you see a polygon and you want to know what its interior angle measures are, you can pick a vertex and draw diagonals down from it to the other vertices and multiply it by 180, right? So an n-gon would be n minus 2 triangles. So we would have n minus 2 times 180. And we'll talk about that more in our next lesson, Polygon Angle Sum Theorem. All right? Okay, so we're off to a new chapter, and I hope I'll see you next time. Hit that like button for me. Bye.